Godfrey. We're here, Utah Motorsports Campus. Um, it's awesome, because Godfrey Proof is actually based out here. So I broke into Greg Godfrey's uh, shop, garage, and uh, stole a bike so we can do the jump testing today. Uh, it's the first time we've actually been back to the track since 2019's Nitro Rallycross. It's actually in really good condition. We've got a little bit of grass growing, uh, but the biggest thing for us is there's all new aero packages, all new motor packages, and just wanted to get out here and make sure that the car flies well, uh, the car doesn't blow up. It's higher altitude than almost anywhere else we test. Uh, it's pretty hot out there today. It's going to be hot uh, when we're doing the race, so just making sure that all the systems are go uh, for the Subaru team, and then also making some adjustments and kind of going over the track design uh, with Scott Speed. Being Travis's teammate uh, is great. We work really well together mostly, I think, because we're completely opposite. I'm very analytical and methodical, and he's very grip it and rip it. And that's great from teammates because you don't want two of the same guys. You want to have different perspectives on things. You see that uh, bobcat out there on the big jump? That's why you're testing. Okay, okay. you're gonna dial in the jump. Well, uh, it's a good team, man. I get to follow it down on the corners and make sure it flies nice and straight. T tell me exactly what inputs I need to make on there so I don't crash again. <laughs> and uh, we'll be good. But you didn't really crash, you just missed the landing. Uh, yeah. So Scott broke his back last time he was here, so it's a little traumatic uh, physically and emotionally, but uh, he's back. And what's really cool <laughs> about this team is um, Scott's probably one of the most meticulous drivers out there. He's on top of Rallycross. Um, so for me to come in and have Scott is really awesome. So we always go out, um, I, I like to test the jumps first with the motorcycle because if you notice something's off or it's too soft or whatever, you can kind of bunny hop a motorcycle or you got a little more suspension or you can maneuver where it goes. Whereas with the car, it's really expensive if you don't make it. Testing the triple crossover. This thing is absolutely awesome. I'm traveling at about 79 miles an hour on the takeoff. That gives me a sweet spot of 140 feet in distance. The gap is 105 feet edge to edge. After that, it's just a little painful, but if you hit it at 85 miles an hour, you go all the way to flat, and yes, it's got speed. That's not the way to do it. So, a lot of fun when it goes right, not a lot of fun when it goes wrong. I'm trying to make it as safe as possible and spectacular as it can be. Friday morning, just got off the plane from testing yesterday in Utah. Just got here to Sarasota. Miss uh, Geico, baddest boat on the water. This thing's gonna be awesome. I'll be driving that with Steve Curtis as my throttleman. But really, what's gonna be exciting for this weekend to make it a little bit different, even more gnarly if that's possible, I'll be throttling for Maryland Wrecking Cruise own multiple time world champion Britt Lilly uh, in the Hurricane of Awesomeness. And then going up against us in the same class, you have multiple time world champion Britt Lilly's throttleman who is switching drivers for Jim York, who's here for the trash girl, ladies and gentlemen. What could possibly go wrong? I'm just gonna give Kevin, I'll give you one little bit of advice. Don't tell him anything. Just say, drive the boat and don't die. He does That's really well it. with less information. The less I know. <laughs> I get confused easy, so. Actually, I, one of the first pieces of advice I gave him, I said, anything Travis told you, don't listen to him. <laughs> And I got two shirts to put on today. We've got Team LSB, Hurricane of Awesomeness, 
and obviously the baddest boat on the water, Team Miss Geico. We got driver's meeting and throttleman's meeting, and then we'll be dropping hopefully the Hurricane Awesomeness in the water. the lead. Sunprint right behind Team Lobo. Whoa! They spun the boat out. They hooked it and spun out. What happened to Steve Miklos and Furman? Look at this battle for second place. That is Pit Piper just getting past Visit St. Pete Clearwater. And that is Britt Lilly and the legend Travis Mastana. And here's our battle for first place in Stock B. Hurricane of Awesomeness has got by you gun learned by a boat length. But coming across the start finish line to take the win in Stock D is Hurricane of Awesomeness. <laughs> oh, I was like, this is what a flip feels like, huh? I swear to God, I was like, damn it, dude, we just dumped it. I've never had my butthole puckered for that long of my entire life. That was, again, just a wave of emotions, like really, really awesome, scariest thing ever. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we could have done a little, like wanted to do a little bit better, but we're not at the bottom of the ocean and guys that do this all the time are, so I'm gonna check a box, call it a win, gonna live forever. Whoa! How'd it go, Oh Trav? my God, dude. No, like literally one of the most scary experiences of my life and not in control of the, the wheel, but knowing we're way beyond where we should have done a barrel roll, doing about 100 down the freaking, or 80 down the first stairway. That thing, it, it launched up, all we saw was sky, hit, hooked, turned left, he's gripping and ripping, turns right, gripping and ripping, and I just power down, I'm like, well, Jesus, take the wheel, or Brit, like one or two, just make this work. <laughs> um, I've done my job, I've done messed up, and now it's on you. He did an awesome job, way better than I expected. Everything was, it, it was awesome, man. Uh, and also, man, we had to, uh, we had a couple of uh, sensors, something's going bad. We had to shut the motor off, turn it back on twice while we were racing. So, I don't know, man, it was, it, it was great. Uh, podium, I'm happy. <laughs> Well, the boat race started out awesome. Got to try the V-bottom, got to be the throttle man. Uh, weather came in, obviously wasn't able to run the, the cat. So that was disappointing, but right now heading to ERX for Nitro Rallycross with Andrew Carlson. Um, they're gonna try to transform this, basically a, a Pro 2, Pro 4 short course truck track um, into a Rallycross track. And I think it's gonna work out awesome so just got to add a little bit to the landings always fun to hang out with Carlson it's such a great family and uh, it's gonna be a good time oh yeah street sweeper add that to the resume you know, started in dozers there's loaders uh, water trucks whatever you need uh, the roller has been absolutely uh, monumental and just getting the track completely packed where we need it uh, then we go to the can ams and jump in this Grab a helmet and uh, test some jumps out. Now, we're getting in the supercar and we're gonna see how it flies. So, uh, these guys are all uh, hoping we did a good job with our, with our angles and I really believe we did. So, uh, it's pretty neat having all this equipment and having the Can-Am to be able to, to really test everything. So when you get in you know, the really expensive piece of machinery, uh, you don't mess it up and you don't look like a fool. So wish me luck.
like uh, like I explained earlier, motorsport or rallycross is uh, fight sports answer to MMA. You know, you have it all. And in NRX, you see so many variations of tracks. The one in Utah with the big jump has a little bit more tarmac to it. This one here at the ERX has only dirt, uh, bank corners. Uh, you have. Uh, different jumps. The, the thought that's gone behind all these venues that we're going to for NRX is, you know, completely at a, at a different level to any of the rally cross racing that's been here in the States before. The tracks are very different and what's really exciting right now is the sport's changing, the type of tracks we're going to are changing, the driving style is going to change, all of us are going to have to adapt to this. Uh, it's going to be really exciting for the fans, so it, for, for that it, it's, I think everybody's extra excited to get this season going. So I've never driven a Pro 4 before. Uh, Andrew Carlson just went and I'm driving a Pro 4 at Brandon next month, actually before uh, ERX and the NRX series starts. And I convinced them, I was like, I don't want a Pro 2. They're like, no, the Pro 2 is where you want. I'm like, I don't do rear wheel drive. I do all wheel drive. So I finally talked him into letting me use a Pro 4. Pro 4. You're making me look bad. No, not. I feel like I was wasting all your time. Like we just wasted a year in Pro 2. I, I wanted to hear that one more time. Uh, thank you, Fardad. <laughs> you got it. I want Pro. It was, I don't know how to work the two wheels. You gotta cool. like be patient and wait for it. It looked fun. Well, dude, this was a blast. I still was kind of sissy footed in because I didn't want to roll on my first. You were not sissy footed. Well, no, but I, I, you could have easily that... like I was turning in late and a little bit, and then I was sawing at the wheel. But at the end of the day. This made sense. Everything it did yeah, made sense. Like your corrections. Except for when that. you told me to stop saw at the wheel and then I stopped moving the wheel, I was like, wow, it really does the exact same thing without me doing all this yeah. stuff. So that, that was nice. You got a new teammate. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm pumped. This is sweet. Thanks, Bardad. Thank you, Yokohama. Awesome. Making dreams yeah. and nightmares come true, baby. Yeah. <laughs> There is absolutely no way I would make it on this track. But enough about me, let's talk about these idiots right now.